Mass Transit is a powerful .NET library for building distributed applications. It simplifies messaging and event-driven architecture, making it easy to build scalable and resilient applications. Mass Transit supports different transports like RabbitMQ, Amazon SQS, Azure Service Bus, etc. It abstracts away the complexities of these different transports and provides a unified API for sending and receiving messages across these different transports. In this video, let's learn how to get started using Mass Transit from a .NET application. I will be using a AWS MQ hosted RabbitMQ instance as my transport. We will learn how to set up Mass Transit and start using it to publish and subscribe to messages. This video is sponsored by AWS and is part of my RabbitMQ series. Hello everyone. Welcome back to this YouTube channel. My name is Rahul and I make videos on .NET, Cloud and DevOps. Let's switch over to JetBrains Rider where I have an existing solution open. This is a default ASP.NET Core Web API with an extra method that I have added in the program.cs to add weather forecast. So here you can see there is a map post endpoint which creates a new weather forecast entry. Now let's say we need a new feature. Whenever a new weather forecast is added, we need to send an email to a specific email address. Now these requirements could be different based on your application scenarios and the events that you would be raising would be different. But the fundamental concepts of using Mass Transit and RabbitMQ together will remain the same. Now we could bake in the sending of email functionality right within this code of the post endpoint. However, that would increase the coupling of that feature and also the feature of adding a new weather forecast. This makes it a typical scenario to actually separate this out as an event and then react to that specific event. Now, if you want to learn more about event and commands in general, I highly recommend checking out my messaging series, which will be linked here and also in the descriptions below. To raise an event, whenever we create a weather forecast, let's first do that. So in the event.cs, I have a new event which says weather data added event. So we will be raising this anytime a new weather forecast is added. Now we have seen a similar example using barebones rabbitmq.net client in my rabbitmq getting started video. You can check that to understand the basic concepts of rabbitmq. However, in this video, we will be using mass transit, a library that abstracts away the complexities of the rabbitmq transport. So let's see how to get started using that. Mass transit is a .NET library that provides a developer focused modern platform for creating distributed applications without complexity. I highly recommend checking out their website masstransit.io which will be also linked below in the descriptions. Now you can go to the quick starts and navigate to the transport that you are interested in to start using Mass Transit. Now, as I said before, this supports different transports like RabbitMQ, Service Bus, Amazon SQS, etc. So let's navigate into RabbitMQ, which has the information on how to get started using RabbitMQ. The first step as expected is to add a NuGet package. So let's go back to our writer solution, right click on our project and say manage NuGet packages. Now, since we need Mass Transit and mass transit for RabbitMQ, let's first install the mass transit RabbitMQ package, which will bring in the mass transit package as well. So let's click install on our project and let's install this NuGet package. Now, once installed, we can start using this to publish and subscribe to messages. Now, in this case, let's come back to our program.cs and inside the weather forecast data, let's also take in a iBus, which comes from mass transit. So you can add in the namespace and take this as a bus. Now this will get automatically injected into our controller once we write the setup code for mass transit, which we will get to a while later. So once we have the bus, we can use this to publish the new event. So once we have written the new weather data, we can specify bus dot publish and call the new weather data added event. So in this case, it's going to be weather data added event and pass in the required information. So this has the city, which we can pass in as the data dot city. This also has the temperature C, which comes from data dot temperature C. And let's also pass the date time, which is going to be coming from data dot date. Now, since this is a wait, let's also make sure to add the async to this function. So to publish an event, it's as simple as getting in the bus instant and publishing that event. Now this is going to create the new event and publish it to RabbitMQ using the mass transit library. Now once an event is published, we need to handle this and send an email. That is where you will be adding a consumer. So let's go to the Pollution Explorer and let's add a new class. So let's right click and click add and create a new class. In this case, this is going to be a send new weather data 
email. So this is going to be the consumer that we are going to create. To make this a consumer of that specific event, all we need to do is to implement the interface iConsumer, which again comes from the mass transit library. So let's use the iConsumer and let's use the generic version of that and specify the message type that we will be handling. In this case, it's going to be the weather data added event because that is what this consumer is going to be handling for. So let's implement the missing members on this interface, which has the consume method, which takes in the consume context and the weather data event. So the context will have the message in information of that specific weather data event. So let's implement this. So let's simply again write the console.write line and let's say sending email and let's use the message context details. So let's use string interpolation in this case for city and let's specify context.message.city and we can also specify the other details in here. So we have written this sending email for city on the date and also with that specific temperature. Since this is returning a task, let's simply return a task dot completed task from our method. Now we have the consumer and we also have raised the event. Now let's do the wiring up of RabbitMQ with mass transit at the start of our application. So let's navigate into program.cs. Let's scroll to the top where we are setting the builder and the application information and let's start registering mass transit. So all we need to do is specify builder.services.add mass transit, which is again an extension method that's coming from the mass transit library. This function takes in a iBus registration configurator that allows us to further configure the mass transit settings. So inside this, let's take in mass transit configurator instance and let's configure this specific mass transit setup. So using the mass transit configurator, let's first specify the consumers for our application. So in this case, we have one consumer, which is the send new weather data email. So I'm explicitly adding in that as a consumer to mass transit. Now we need to specify the transport that's going to be used for mass transit. For this, let's specify MT dot using RabbitMQ method, which is an extension method on that configurator. So this comes from the mass transit RabbitMQ NuGet package. So let's specify that, which again takes in a configuration for RabbitMQ because we need to specify the address, username and password to connect to the RabbitMQ instance. So let's take in a context and also the configuration information, which is how we need to specify this specific configuration. Now on the configuration, we can specify the host information for RabbitMQ and also set up the username and password. So in this case, we need to specify the host, which we will get from appsettings.json. So let's go to our appsettings.json and add in a configuration inside here. So let me copy and paste the RabbitMQ configuration section where I have the host information and the username and password. Now, since the username and password are sensitive, I will not add this to the appsettings.json. JSON. Let's use .NET user secrets for that. So we can right click on the project. Let's go to tools and let's specify .NET user secrets. Now, if you're new to .NET user secrets, I highly recommend checking out my video, which will be linked here and in the descriptions below. Now this creates a new secrets.json file, which lives outside of this solution and on your local machine. So you don't have to check this file in. So any developer who is pulling up this code will need to set up the secrets.json file on their local machine. Now this is purely a local development feature. So let's make sure to copy and paste the username and password configuration inside here as well. So we have the RabbitMQ configuration and the username and the password inside this. So let's make sure to save this and let's navigate to program.cs. Now, since I need to retrieve these configuration from the app settings, let's create a new class to hold that information. So let's create the rabbit configuration with the three properties that we need. And let's get this information while we register this RabbitMQ configuration. So here we can specify the rabbit configuration and use it from the builder.configuration. So let's retrieve it from builder.configuration.get section and give the name of the RabbitMQ configuration. So let's specify name of and use rabbit configuration. So I have made sure to name it exactly the same. So you can see this is going to be rabbit configuration and the app settings.json is also named exactly the same. So once we have the section, let's also get the rabbit configuration. So let's use the get and pass in the rabbit configuration type. So this is going to get from the configuration and parse it into that C sharp class. So once we have the rabbit configuration, we can use this as the host. So let's specify rabbit configuration.host. 
Let's also specify the username and the password. So this takes in a host configurator and let's specify the host dot username and pass in the username, which is again going to be the rabbit configuration dot username, which is going to be dot username property. And let's also specify the password, which is coming from rabbit configuration dot password. So we have set up the host, which is the host address, and also configured the username and password for that specific host. Now we need to tell Mass Transit on how to set up the exchanges and queues on RabbitMQ. For this, we can use the default convention for this video, which can be used by specifying the configuration.configureEndpoints method, and let's pass in the context to that. So this is going to automatically create the channels and exchanges based on the default mass transit convention. We will see what that is once we run this application. With that set up, let's make sure to put a breakpoint in our send new weather data email and also inside our program.js where we are publishing the new event. Now let's also take a look at my RabbitMQ instance setup so let's navigate to my AWS console. Let's navigate to Amazon MQ where I have the instance already created. So I have the Hello Rabbit instance, which is created on Amazon MQ. Now you can be hosting your RabbitMQ instance anywhere of your choice and putting the appropriate host name and connection details when we configure the instance. So let's navigate to the RabbitMQ web console. Let's give in the username and password. Here we can see the RabbitMQ instance. So if I navigate into the channels, you can see there are no default channels inside this and the exchanges has only the default ones. We also don't have any queues created yet. So this is a fresh install of RabbitMQ instance. So let's run our application and see how this gets set up. So let's navigate back to Rider and let's press F5. So the application has started and it's launching the default Swagger UI that is set up for an ASP.NET Core application. So let's expand the post weather forecast and let's create a new entry. So let's click try it out. Let's specify the city as Brisbane and let's specify the date for today and let's also specify the temperature C as 20. Now let's click execute. Now this is going to hit our post endpoint and it's going to publish a weather data added event. So as soon as we publish this, we can see that our send new weather data email consumer has been invoked and it is writing this into the console. So you can see that's writing the message and you can see it in the console line here. So you can see that a new weather data added for Brisbane and it is sending an email for that Brisbane with that temperature. So Mass Transit has automatically wired up this event and the consumer that it's associated to with RabbitMQ. So let's navigate to our RabbitMQ console and see how this is getting set up. So if I go to the exchanges first, you can see here we have two new exchanges created. We have the send new weather data email exchange and also the weather data added event exchange. You can see both of them are of type fan out exchanges. So if I navigate into the weather data added event, you can see this specific exchange is bound to the send new weather data email. So any messages that's coming to this specific exchange is being sent to this new exchange, which is the send new weather data Data email. So clicking this will navigate me to that specific exchange and here you can see that this is again bound to a queue which is the send new weather data email. So any messages coming into this specific exchange will be sent to this queue. So if I navigate into the queues or click this you can see the queue is also existing here and if I navigate into that you can see the actual consumer is on this specific queue. Now you need to understand what exchanges are queue are in RabbitMQ to understand what's happening here. If you're completely new to that I highly recommend checking out my RabbitMQ series. At a high level what Mass Transit is doing is it sets up an exchange which is for our message type that we are publishing which is the event so it creates an exchange for that which it routes to another exchange that it can send the messages to so this again is an exchange which is specifically for the consumer that is consuming this message so any publisher which is going to sit here which is going to be the publisher is going to publish message to this exchange which is going to set up as a fan out exchange which means any message coming into this exchange is going to be sent to the other exchange as well now on this exchange this message is get pumped to a queue because you can only consume messages from a queue. So this is getting sent to a queue where we have the consumer listening. So we have the consumer pulling the messages from this queue and consuming them. 
So let's see what happens if we have one more consumer for this specific message. So let's stop this. Let's create a new consumer. So let's copy and paste this code for send weather data email. And let's say we also need to send an SMS. So let's rename this as SMS. We are consuming the same event, which is the iWeather data added event. And in this case, we're going to say send SMS. So now we have two consumers. So we'll have to come to the program.cs. Make sure we register this consumer inside mass transit. So let's specify mass transit dot add consumer. And let's specify the send new weather data SMS as a consumer as well. So now if I run this application, so let's run this again. So the moment the application starts, Mass Transit is going to set up our RabbitMQ as required. So if I navigate back into RabbitMQ management, let's go to the exchanges again and let's refresh this. So here you can see there is now a new exchange that is created, which is the send new weather data SMS. However, we only still have one weather data added event. So let's see what's happening there. So if I navigate into the weather data added event, you can now see that that exchange is bound to two other exchanges, which is the one for email and the one for SMS. Now the SMS in turn is being bound to the SMS queue, which it sends the messages to. So now if I navigate to the queues, you can see we have two queues in here. Now each of them has the consumers and pulls the messages from that. So if I come back to our diagram, you can see here that what RabbitMQ has done is it's still having one exchange for the event and there is another exchange that this is getting bound to. So we have the SMS exchange inside this. So that's again an exchange which is getting bound to another queue. So you can see there are two queues inside this right now and we have the consumers pulling messages from this queue. So if we publish once, for the weather data event, it's getting sent to both these exchanges from where it is getting sent to the associated queues from where the respective consumers are picking up. So by default, this is the queue topology that RabbitMQ sets up for you automatically. So this is happening because we've called the configure endpoints and passed in the context while setting up the mass transit with RabbitMQ. So now if I was to send a message, so let's navigate back to the Swagger UI. Let's send this message again. So let's change this temperature to be 21 and let's say execute. Now in this case, it's going to publish it once, which is the weather data added event. So if I navigate back to here and put a breakpoint on both of these consumers, both of them are going to get invoked. So you can see the weather data added event for the email is getting invoked and also the SMS is getting invoked. Now in the console, you can see both the log lines, which is sending email and sending SMS. Mass Transit is highly customizable and configurable, allowing you to tailor its behavior to your specific needs and requirements. This flexibility makes it suitable for a wide range of use cases and scenarios. In future videos, we will learn how to control the queues that are getting created, how to route multiple messages into the same queues, and also control the processing rate of messages based on your consumer definitions. Meanwhile, if you have any questions or feedback on the topics to be covered, drop them in the comments below. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. And if you want to be notified when future videos comes out, please make sure to hit that subscribe button as well. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.